Okay, welcome everybody. It's Tuesday night and we are back and we are here to talk about physics. We're here to talk about refraction. This is the one you've been waiting for. So to, um, to start us out, I'm just going to start us out with a couple quick definitions here. If we flip to the first slide, waves, wave fronts and rays. Okay, now I think probably most people are comfortable with the idea of what a light ray is. A light ray is, is just, it's just an arrow. And, and what it does, it's an arrow that, that shows the direction that light travels. Okay, and so on this diagram here, you see you have a source that makes circular waves. And these waves go out, and these arrows here, there's three of them, those are, those are rays. Alright, rays are arrows that show the direction a wave is traveling. Okay, to accompany rays you have what are called a wave front, and a wave front is it's just a line to show you where the crest is. That's, that's a nice simple way to do it. If you're standing at a beach and you're looking at the ocean and you see the crests coming into the shore, okay, the, the crests that you're looking at, those are wave fronts. And, and so what we have here is we have a source that sends out circular wave fronts, okay, just like this, and you have the, the rays which are always perpendicular to the wave fronts because the, the rays show the direction the wave is headed pointing out like this. Okay, so again two terms that, that you need to be comfortable with tonight are rays and wave fronts. Alright, so as I said tonight we're talking about refraction. And refraction is a, a very cool phenomenon. Without refraction you wouldn't see me, you wouldn't see anybody. Okay, refraction is, is what happens when light or any wave moves from one boundary to another and when it does that okay it, it'll speed up or it'll slow down and that speeding up or slowing down causes causes a change in direction all right so there's there's two pic pictures that I want you to look at there's this one right here okay and this shows light waves that are starting out in the air this one on the left start out in the air and they move into the glass now these waves came from a source and the source of, of any wave determines the frequency okay and it doesn't matter whether it's light or sound I mean if you're sitting there you play the guitar and you hit the string and the string moves back and forth okay, that string determines the frequency of the wave and once that frequency is is set once that wave is gone you can't change it okay you can't create waves you can't destroy them so the frequency that goes out is the same the entire time the wave travels. Alright, so again, you have a source and it makes a wave and that wave has a frequency and once that frequency is set, you cannot change it. So here's what's happening. Alright, you have light and this picture on the left, it's in the air and it goes into glass. Alright, and when the light goes into the glass, it slows down. So you might remember from last from last week there was a, an equation called the wave equation and the wave equation told us that the speed of the light equals the wavelength times the frequency and as the light goes into this glass okay it's it slows down the frequency goes down excuse me I'm sorry it must be Tuesday night it slows down so the velocity the speed goes down all right and so if the speed is going down and the frequency stays the same the wavelength has to go down as well okay so what you're going to do is you're going to have speed equals wavelength times frequency okay and as the speed decreases going into the glass the, f the wavelength decreases with it all right okay hopefully that's simple enough Let, let's take a look at, at this this is a little a FET simulation okay what we have is is to quote uh, Austin Powers, Dr. Evil, we have a laser. And what this laser is going to do is it's going to send a, a light ray down. So this red line is a light ray. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the view of it. And then what we're going to do is look at the wave fronts. So I click on it, and there you go. And we have these black and red lines are wave fronts that are going through. Now this is a boundary. And right now it's a boundary between two medium or material that are the same thing and what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this bottom material right now they're both air I'm going to take this and I'm going to slide it over and turn it into glass 
Okay, and so when I do that, now I have a boundary right here. I have two materials. I have air up above and I have glass down below. And you can see what happens is, well, hopefully you can see it here. I'll try and make it a little bigger. Oh, ah, it's not going to let me do that. Okay. Um, hopefully what you can see in looking at the wave fronts is, is the, the, the waves are moving quickly here and slowly here. And the frequency is set up here at the light source itself. And we can change it. Once you get it, you're stuck with it. So what happens is, as it moves through the air, these red lines and black lines are, are relatively far apart. And then once it enters the slower medium, they get closer together. And so in order to slow down, okay, the wavelength decreases. All right? As a, as a light ray slows down, the wavelength decreases. Okay, so let's switch this back to air. And let's try doing the opposite. Let's take, take the top one, and we're going to turn that into glass. So now we have, we have a laser that's in the glass, sends a light ray out. And you can see these wavelengths are pretty close together. The wavelengths are pretty small, and the waves move pretty slow. As it passes into the, the air, the new medium, okay, the wavelengths increase and, and the wave travels faster. Okay? Alright, so let's let's flip back to this and take a look at this phenomena here. This is this is called refraction. And and I I know with a few classes we had a, we were able to go outside and I was able to with, some people were able to see the, the wave fronts, okay, I think they had people line up and pretend they were a wave front. As it crossed into the new material, okay, you took smaller steps, and those smaller steps slowed you down. And it also turned you towards this line here. This line here, this dotted line, is called a normal. Okay, I'll make it a little bigger for you so you can see it. All right, the dotted line is, is, a, is, is the normal. And so what happens when light refracts is this. If it goes from a fast medium into a slow medium, all right, then the light ray, the incident ray, that's this one, because it's, it's before, okay? The incident ray bends towards the normal, all right? And then as you go out into a fast medium, the, the ray bends away from the normal. And that's a relationship called Snell's Law, which we're going to talk about in, in the next lesson. We're going to come back to that one. Okay? So right now, what I want you to get from this, from this idea is this. I want you to see that... Uh, let me escape from that. That's maybe a bad idea. There we go. Okay. What I want you to see from this is that... Uh, page width. Okay. I want you to see that in a fast medium or a fast material, light waves have, they, they travel faster and they have larger wavelengths, longer wavelengths. And then as they go into a slower material, they, they have shorter wavelengths. Okay. So with that in mind, I'm going to introduce this topic. This is called the index of refraction. An index of refraction is it's a, a number that has no units. It's a, a constant that compares the speed of light in a material to the speed of light in a vacuum. A vacuum is, is the absence of atoms. There's no matter there at all. Okay? The formula to find index of refraction is N, this index of refraction, equals C over V. And C is the speed of light in a vacuum. It's 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, and that's a constant number. It doesn't change. All right? That's, that's in fact, the, the fastest speed in the universe. There is no 4 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. It doesn't exist. Okay? Nothing can travel faster than light, and that speed is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Okay? And so what the index of refraction does is it gives us an idea of how fast the light travels in a given material. So, for example, I have here the example is glass. And the index of refraction for glass is 1.5. And that means that light travels 1.5 times faster in a vacuum than it does in glass. So, so the speed of light in a vacuum is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So the speed of light in glass would be 
1.5 times slower would be 2 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. All right. All right, let's take a look at a sample question. All right, and I might even put the revealer up for this one. Here we go. Okay, so here's what this question says. And it says, whoa, okay, too many programs open at once here. There we go. Okay, it says, find the index of refraction for water if light travels 2.26 times 10 to the 8 meters per second in water. All right, so they're giving us the velocity of light in water, and they want us to find the index of refraction. So in order to do that, we'll write down our given information. Okay, it's, it's always a good idea to do that, because what it does is it, is it shows who's ever marking your test that, okay, you, you at least understand the material in the question. All right, and sometimes when you look at the given information, you can use it to get a formula, and then things just snowball, and all of a sudden, you, you're getting perfect. Okay, so here's our given information. The speed of light in the vacuum is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And the velocity of light in water is 2.26 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. You notice that it's slower. Okay, so we take those two numbers, we put them in the formula, n equals c divided by v. Index of refraction equals c divided by velocity. And you get 1.33. That's the index of refraction for water. Now you notice I get after people about units. There are no units for index of refraction because you have meters per second on the top, meters per second on the bottom, they cancel out. And so index of refraction is just a coefficient. There's there's no there's no units associated with it. Okay? Another thing to know about index of refraction is it's always greater than or equal to one. It's impossible to have an index of refraction less than one because that would mean your speed is bigger than three times ten to the eight meters per second. And that's the fastest that light or anything else can go. Alright? So let's try one more here. Let's let's see. Um, hang on a second here, I'll slide this down. Okay. Alright, oh, I don't want to get into Snell's Law yet. Do I have another? Alright, that was the only one I had for that. So you know what I'm going to do actually is I'm, I'm going to break this up into into two, um, two segments because um, I know different classes are at different points and it's a lot of material for one lesson. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop this tape and I'll get you maybe to, to try some of the questions we had on the handout on index of refraction. I think it's um, worksheet number one, two, and three. Give those a shot, see how you do with them, okay? And then we'll come back and we'll talk about Snell's Law. All right, if I don't see you tonight, have yourself a great night, and we'll talk to you again soon.